When it comes to angular motion, the first thing we want to talk about is how we're going to measure it. Uh, one of the main ways we're going to measure it is with angle of rotation. Uh, and so we're going to measure uh, literally how far has this thing rotated angularly. Okay, so we're going to do it using angles. The angles we use are going to be in radians, so you're going to have to remember how to use radians. Okay. Uh, here we have the angle that we're rotating through. We have the radius of the circle we're rotating about, or the radius of our rotation. And then delta S here is the arc length, sort of the distance around the circle that we've rotated. So our angular rotation, or how we would measure it, our angle that we rotate through is equal to that arc length over the radius. Now remember this is measured in radians, okay? So all of the angles we're going to use here are in radians. Uh, one thing to remember is that 2 pi radians is equal to one full circle or one full rotation. Okay. Or maybe more familiar, 360 degrees of rotation is 2 pi radians. So half a rotation would be equal to just pi radians. Okay. So try and remember some of your, your facts about how to use radians, and we'll remind you in class as well. So if we have things rotating around in a circle, we're also going to want to know how fast they're rotating around in a circle, so that would be our angular velocity. For angular velocity, we're going to use omega, which is kind of like a, a curvier little w there. And just like our, our regular velocity was change in distance over time, or not distance, but displacement over time, uh, our angular velocity is going to be some sort of change in a, a rotation per time. So in this case, how quickly are we changing our angle over time is our angular velocity, right? How fast are we rotating? The faster we rotate, the faster our angle changes. Now we can also compare this to a, an actual velocity. Okay. A velocity, remember, would have units of meters per second. Uh, so we need something that's a distance per time. Our distances, in this case, are like the arc length that we saw, right? Sort of the distance we cover around the edge of the circle, which we called s over t, right? So how much distance we've covered per time would give us a velocity. From the last part, we can remember that delta theta, our, our change in angle, was delta s over r. And so we could solve for delta s and say delta theta times r was equal to s. And then we can take this and plug it in for delta s. So that we have v equals delta theta r over t. Well, delta theta over t is just omega. So v is equal to omega r. And that's one way that we can sort of translate this rotational motion up here into a linear velocity. So an example of how that might work might look something like this. Uh, a car is a pretty good example. So we'll take our car here. We notice with a car we have both rotational and linear motion, right? We have the wheels rotating causing the linear motion of the center of mass of the car. So if we have this wheel rotation, that's my omega. How quickly is it rotating around? Well, how does that omega, that, how fast the wheels are going around, maybe the RPM of the wheels, translate into the linear velocity? So if we knew how fast these wheels were spinning, we could use V equals omega times R to figure out how fast that car is actually going. Or, flip side, if we know V, we can figure out how fast those wheels have to spin in order to get that certain velocity. So if you're going 30 miles an hour, you could figure out how fast, how quickly, how many rotations per second your wheel needs to make uh, in order to get you to that speed. So if we, if, if we had our sort of rotational versions of position with angle, with velocity, with omega or angular velocity, it probably makes sense that we have a, an acceleration in a rotational term as well. Uh, and that's going to be our centripetal acceleration. Uh, centripetal acceleration is the acceleration that is sort of pushing this thing into a circle. It's what's accelerating it in a circular path, right? Anything that's moving in a circular path is accelerating. Remember that because we're changing direction. And so there has to be something that's constantly going towards the center, some part of its motion that's constantly going towards the center to keep it from flying off perpendicular to our circle. So that acceleration that's accelerating it towards the center is our centripetal acceleration. 
Centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r, so our velocity squared over r. The other way we can write this, remember that v was equal to rw, or r omega, squared over r. Well, r squared over r is just r, and omega squared, so the other way to write that is that ac is equal to r omega squared. So our centripetal acceleration is equal to r omega squared. Common application for this would be something like uh, a centrifuge. Okay, and this will illustrate a, a very important point. We talked about acceleration being towards the center of the circle. Well, when you go around in a circle, say in a car or something, you feel like you're being pushed towards the outside. That's because of your inertia, right? Your body doesn't want to change direction all of a sudden. It wants to keep going whichever direction it's going, and that direction happens to be perpendicular to the circular path. So as things rotate around, spin around, our acceleration, centripetal acceleration, is keeping things moving in a circle, even though the inertia wants to go that way. And remember, mass is a measure of inertia, right? So heavier things don't get pushed towards the center as either. More massive things don't get pushed towards the center as easy. So when we have a centrifuge, say, with a blood sample in it, the denser, more massive parts of that blood sample get pushed towards the outside, while the thinner parts are on the inside because it has more inertia that wants to keep going in that straight line instead of being accelerated towards the center of that circle. Uh, that type of, that feeling, at least, of being pushed towards the outside is sometimes referred to as a centrifugal force, though I don't really like that term. Um, and, and so that's what you're feeling, is just your inertia pushing you there, your inertia wanting to continue in that perpendicular path to the circle, uh, even though you're being accelerated towards the center.